GG, nice. This deck is insane. Veil Temple is a card people are just sleeping on. Hi there, Televate here, and I've got a new Nightfall deck for you, using some of the new cards from the Ophelia expansion. And this deck is actually insane. I think people are sleeping on some of the strongest cards in the game, which help Nightfall a lot at the moment. And this deck, I've played it, and I've lost one game since I put it together. Like, it's just a nuts nuts deck. And I've been going up against really strong meta decks like TF, Fizz, Aphelios, Piltover and Zorn combo, and this deck just smashes them. I feel if you play correctly, this deck is actually insane. For the Blugger with this deck, what you're really looking for is your activators. So I always look for Lunari Dustbringer and The Flight. If you don't have one of those two cards in your hand, you mulligan your whole hand away every time. If you do have those cards, you can start looking to keep your key units. So key units I'll keep are uh, Lunari Shade Stalker and Aphelios, just a strong Nightfall units you want to get out early. Everything else I'm mulligan away. If you have a really, really ideal hand, so like two Nightfall activators, Aphelios, and then you can keep something like the Veiled Temple because getting the Veiled Temple on turn four or turn five just gives you so much extra value. The extra mana is insane. But that's basically it for the mulligan. Just look really, really hard for your activators. And the deck is quite hard to pilot. So you'll see from these videos, I make a lot of strange decisions. It's an aggressive deck, but you play slowly and then you blow your opponent out in one turn. So you'll see that in the games and hopefully you can try this deck out for yourself and have some success with it. And remember, if you enjoy the deck or the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more decks like this. I always try and go for some fun off meta decks and I'll say this is it, but I could very well see this deck becoming meta. And also if you want my deck lists, as soon as I make them, follow me on Twitter. But let's get into some gameplay. So we're up against Fizz TF. This will be an interesting game. This is a very strong deck. And I haven't actually played, I haven't actually played this deck using my Nightfall deck yet, so it'll be interesting to see how it does. A hand here, we're mainly looking for our Nightfall activators. It might be tempting to keep Faded Memories, but I won't, I'll just pass. Reroll everything, looking for some activators. Got Dustbringers, which are great. You always play Dustbring in turn one. It's the only unit you play turn one in this deck. No more hiding. Might as well attack in, we're happy if he trades his Fizz. And damage against his deck is permanent, which is really, really strong. Um, so here we have to think. We could play the Flight. Yeah, I like playing the Flight here. We can trade it into the Fizz if he wants to. One damage we don't care about. We're definitely not going to block this. One reason for playing the flight is it allows me to play Stygian and Crescent Guardian next turn. So I wouldn't have had enough mana to play the flight this turn. So I'm playing the Crescent Guardian first just because he might have something like get excited to kill this. And if he does that, we're completely happy. We'll just play the Stygian, which also gets him four damage. I'm going to play the Stitch in here, definitely. Now this is a good blocker. And there is a certain element of racing in this matchup. So I'm not going to attack. I'm also not going to attack with this because the best block this can get is on Fizz. So it's not really worth blocking those two in my opinion. This trade is great for us. It's down to 12 health already, which is insane. And his deck has no form of healing. Hey there. Hand. Can't say no to Fizz. Just going to play the flight here as well, just as another elusive blocker. No. So that's a good trade for us, so we take that. And we're playing Dew Beast here. Get some healing value and some damage. If we stalk in shadows into another Doom Beast, I think we win, to be honest. Uh, this is good. 
I'm going to play Stalking Shadows first to see what I get. It's very likely I open attack though. And we get Dean Boost, which is insane. This might be game here. And we're just attacking with everything to push as much damage as possible. And this is exactly what we want to see from him. This is like desperation from him. Now we have no spells in hand, so it's not worth bank banking this as spell mana. Make sure not to play the ephemeral ones. That's one. That's a mistake I make quite a lot. Hell Cascade here is great. This turn, we're not really looking to play either of these on our defensive turns, so we're just going to play Dustbringer and pass. Through I get excited. That's interesting. Oh, he's just playing the stress test in his is. That's good for us. We are running a bit out of steam, but to be honest, as soon as we draw something like Nocturne, we'll just win this game straight up. Humanity is obsolete. We'll take this trade here, it's a good trade. Um, we don't play this Doom Beast just because we want to be able to attack with it. And actually, I'm going to open with Glimpse here. Just because we definitely need to see what we get. Nocturne is really great. Veil Temple also good. So Nocturne is bad into suit up. Also would be bad into get excited. But I don't think we really have much choice here. He threw away a get excited earlier, so there is a chance he doesn't have one. He uses chum. Which we're completely okay with. This trade always happens. There's nothing we can do to block it. But he gets the overwhelm damage with Longtooth. So that's the difference, which is two damage. But if we get to play a unit next turn, such as Cygnus, we'll probably reduce more damage. So I'm not going to attack with Nocturne here. Any blocks? This is really good for us then. Because basically he has to win this turn, but... Ah. Uh, not getting another unit does hurt. Rummaging for something. This game is so close. Zap's not a big deal. We're just going to pass here. We might need the Pale Cascade. So we got a block here just because we don't want Fizz to generate the chum. Suit up is great to see, and this is why we bank cape cut the mana on Pale Cascade. And we get another unit, which is great. It's 
So here, it's really tense. I really want another unit up for my draw. Fading Memories, Fading Memories is great here. So, how many spells have I played? Probably not a lot. I quite like taking a zap though. Then we can play Veiled Temple as well. He could have removal for Nocturne, but I don't think we beat that. So here we glimpse, we get our mana back. And another Nocturne! Yes, that's GG. That's insane. GG, we beat the strongest deck in the meta at the moment. Okay, so another matchup against FizzTF. Everyone's just playing this deck because it's so strong. So we've got a Nightfall Activator, and because we have a Nightfall Activator, I'm going to be keeping Aphelios here. And we get Veil Temple. This is actually a re potentially really good combo. Oh boy, here I go. So we just play this. He, he doesn't. I don't think they run any zero cost spells. Oh. I was gonna say, attacking there def is definitely not right. So here I'm just gonna attack. I'm not actually gonna play anything here, just because Dust Petal into Stygian doesn't seem worthwhile. Uh, Mystic Shot there. Okay, sure. I'm only getting two damage in here, and. Just for some mana efficiency, I'm going to be playing Stalking Shadows. And we get the... Uh, there's a few good options here. We're probably lacking on Activators, so I'm going to take the flight. And I'm just going to pass here, because we're quite happy banking the spell mana into next turn. Actually, no, I think we want to play Aphelios here. He could run something like Get Excited to instantly kill Aphelios, but if he does that, we're completely okay. Like, yeah, he's running out of cards already. Sorry. Just thought that great value his plays. And gonna play the flight as an activator here for Stitchian. We're not gonna play Veil Temple here just because it's too slow a play. And attack in. Be interesting to see if he takes that block. Decides not to. Also gonna send them this turn. Actually, no, I don't think there's any benefit in playing it this turn over next turn. There's another zap here, and we're just gonna start playing flights to block his elusives. I'm going to play the temple now just to get some value. We could play another flight to block another attack, but I don't really think it's worthwhile. We need to play this this turn. And yeah, we'll block one of them. We haven't played one card here, so I'm not going to play Crescendum here because it doesn't proc Veil Temple. So now I'm going to play Crescendum. Calibrim was really good into this matchup just because it can remove some of their units, elusive units. We got Goat, which is actually not the one we wanted. We wanted the elusive unit, but whatever it will do. And I'm going to Nocturne and I'm going to grab this just because this has the potential of being a fearsome blocker.
And now I'm fading memories onto this because we need another Nightfall to level up Nocturne. It's still not enough, but it's just more Nightfalls to level up Nocturne. And we'll take this block here. Any of the other blocks are pretty bad for him, and we have Pale Cascade to protect Nocturne if he goes. He could go for something like Block plus Mystic Shot. That's probably enough not to attack with Nocturne here, to be honest. There's the Mystic Shot, so we did a good job playing around that. Um... The options are we can Pale Cascade, which kills the Ballistic Bot, which I think is better than Glimpse Beyond in here. Just because they use the Ballistic Bot to generate draws, and we really need to try and stop him drawing anymore, because if he can't draw anymore, this is just game over here. And I'm going to play the Flight this turn just as another blocker for his Elusives. And we're going to play another flight as another blocker. In. Okay, I'm taking one more damage by blocking Fizz here, but there is the worry he could level up Fizz. And we're blocking this one just to block as much damage as possible. So he removes it for combat to rally. That seems extremely weak. I'm not going to lie. That seems like an extremely weak play. Because we just play Shade Stalker here. And what does he do? Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> you just can't do anything to stop it. Okay. And now we play Lunari first to proc the Nightfall for Crescent Guardian. And this is gonna be GG. Like, he's struggling hard here. He has to block Nocturne with one of those two units. Which seems insane. So he goes for a mind melt to stay alive. But it's still worth attacking with Nocturne here. Just because it kills one of his units. And he's not an elusive blocker anyway. I'm actually going to glimpse this as well to see what I get. Skade, Faded Memories, both great here. And we're just going to attack him with Nocturne. Ah, uh, we need to attack in with this as well to level him up. So he goes down to one health. And we can do this to trade for the elusive. We get another Veiled Temple. I'm actually very happy with that. So I'm going to play the other Veiled Temple. And now because we've got Nocturne leveled. Um, we're fairly good. I, I really don't see how he comes back. Uh, <laughs> there we go. He surrenders. I think everyone's sleeping a Nightfall. Like, Veil Temple and the Flight have made Nocturne a Nightfall just so, so strong. Okay, and now we're up against an Aphelius Victor deck. So this is like a Invoke sort of deck. It's quite good. It's got a lot of healing, so it does have a lot of counterplay to us. Um, got the Flight, but we're attacking second. I kind of don't want to see the Flight then, because we've already got Lunari Desperate. I'll keep one. Just because I run a very small amount of activators in this deck. 
So keeping your activators early on are important. And because we already got activators, I keep Aphidius. Um, and Lion Dust Brigger, again, the only card you play on turn one. And there's no point playing anything here. We want to use this as an activator. Okay with that. Now we could play Aphidius out, and if he goes for a get excited, we have Pale Cascade to protect him. I'm going for Calibrum just to remove this. He's playing his own Aphelios here, so we don't need to keep any mana up for get excited, which means we can freely Calibrum onto his 2-3. The question is, do we Graviton or Severum? I feel Graviton in general, it's hard to say, but my general preference with Aphelios is you go Calibrum, Graviton, Crescendon. The Severum and the Incendorum are just very situational cards. So they are good in some situations, but... You really need to be careful about using them at the right time. So here I'm going to play Nocturne just because it's a great opportunity to play Nocturne here. Usually I don't play Nocturne on turn 4 but this is just such a good opportunity and we can get a kill onto Ophelius. If he passes here it's quite scary actually. Passing is definitely the most scary thing he could do because then he could have Pale Cascade which means we probably have to attack him with Nocturne. But I don't really want to lose my Nocturne that easily. The thing is, he does have cards like Get Excited in that deck, so that could be an issue as well. So here I think we attack like this. If he gets Pale Cascade, we're trading two cards for one, and this is a bad block for him, so... And he doesn't have anything. That's great for us. Gonna look to try and play Gravitum this turn. You just constantly want to use the moon weapons when you can and the great Nightfall activators. And this is why Nightfall's so strong. Like, usually with Nightfall, I'll get to this point, I'll be down to two or three cards. But now, because we've got things like the Flight and Aphidios, you don't need to uh, constantly use great cards for those activators. And we're gonna get Crescendum out. Blocking the goat, stops the gems generation, and next turn when he's stunned, it's a fearsome blocker. He's got another Aphelios, so it's quite lucky. I guess we've got two champions, so it's okay he's got two champions. Uh, I don't really want to commit too much mana here. We do need to play another card for the moon weapon, though. That's a bit annoying just because it's a good kill onto our Nocturne. We can't do anything to stop it though. Ooh, that's new. Here I think we take this block. We don't want Aphelius getting into Mystic Shot range. We want to force him to use to get excited to kill it. And again, just because he's got get excited, we want to save Pale Cascade. Oh, Fermi Beam, exactly another one. Okay, so here it's tempting to play Crescendum, but we can get two Nightfall characters down if we play Lunari Deathbringer first. So I think that's the better line. It's always important to notice Solari Priestess. This could cause a lot of problems. Like, if he gets Twin Sisters, it's really, really hard for us to come back from that. Mystic Shock comes out, and I think we'll just glimpse this for the draw. It means we don't get the Crescent Guardian down, but we really need to get some value out of our glimpses. 
Get a Nocturne, Mountain Goat. These are great cards for us. And we just attack him with everything. There's no reason not to. Can't block these two, and it's not a good block for him because this is ephemeral. We get the Veiled Temple. This is great. Like, this is insane, like, how much draw you get with this deck now. I'm going to play the Temple here. It's playing the Fangs, which is a bit annoying, but we will live with it. And here, I think we play... I'm actually going to dust petal the Aphelios out just so he gets a bit stronger. And we get the mana back from the temple as well. And here, what do we need? We've got quite a few units in hand already. I actually think Gravitum is probably the best thing we can get. So it goes for Calibrim onto that, which I'm okay with. That means I'm going to go with Gravitum. We'll get Crescendum onto this to stop the lifesteal. Devotion through battle. Uh, I don't want to block either of these two. It's just not worth it. Now, this is where we go for our big sort of blowout turn. See if we can get it. We really need to plan ahead. So we've got 8 unit mana, we'll get 2 mana from this, so we've effectively got 10 mana. So we've got 4, 6, 8. Fortunately not enough to play all of that. We've got Crescendum as well. So 4, 3, 7, 8. So if we play these 3, that's 9 mana, plus this for 11th. That seems the best way to do this. Just double counting the mana in my head. Nocturne will level up if every unit manages to get an attack off. We really need to hope this pulls a Nightfall unit, I feel. Flesh was weak, but look at me now. We'll face Calibre Mount. That's good, that's exactly what we needed. It's close. So he doesn't have sisters, but he could have the Meteor Strike, the deal 4, deal 1, which will kill Nocturne. Can you improve perfection? That's a misplay. That's a misplay. Because I can now give it vulnerable. Yes, I think this might be game. He could have a few things. Things like Hush hurt us quite a lot, but we'll see. The other thing he could have is things like Pale Cascade. So I need to see... That is 6 damage. A 6 damage of Overkill. So even if he Pale Cascades and blocks Nocturne, he loses. So I think this is the best play. No, we're going for the kill right now. This... Like, Hush is the only way he wins. So I think this is the best way to do it. So he has to use Hush. And then he has he can't block this. So he has to block at least Nocturne and the Goat to stay alive. Does he have Hush? Is he just BMMing me? Oh, I hate it when people do this. GG, nice! This deck is insane! Veil vale Temple is a card people are just sleeping on. People are sleeping on Veil vale Temple. I I I thought it was OP and I play and playing it, it's just it just seems so so strong. Like I made this deck today. I've lost one game, and that was in a very unrefined version. Apart from that, I've just been powering my way through Master. What rank am I at now? 400. Like it, it, this deck's insane. Anyway, 
Th thanks for watching the games. If you enjoyed the deck or the video, please leave a like and subscribe to see more Rune Terror content just like this. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a good day.